Hello YouTube, CGL's New Jersey Collectibles here, uh, early on a Saturday morning. Uh, as you can see, got the, uh, we got the car packed. Um, Dad's got some stuff in his car too. And uh, we're on our way to the flea market to set up as uh, sellers for the first time this year. Uh, it's the first time I'm gonna be doing this on camera, so uh, I can tell you right off the bat, I am underqualified to, to run a, a production like this. But um, try our best and um, see what happens. I mean, see if we can get some good footage out of it. And if we could, we can make a, a cool video. So take it from there. Uh, and I guess I uh, hope to see a lot of you guys out there. So uh, we're, we're bringing some good stuff. So come spend some money. All right, guys. See you later. All right, YouTube. Out here at the New Jersey Meadowlands Flea Market. Uh, got the whole stand set up. Uh, it took us a little while getting here. We got here at like 6.30, but we weren't able to get a stand set up until recently, like probably like 8.30. It took two hours to, to stand in line to get a, a booth, so I wish, you know, they were a little quicker on that. We heard that people were lining up here to get booths since 2 o'clock in the morning. I think that's a little bit ridiculous, but it is what it is. Um, unfortunately, we're kind of in the back. All the action's kind of going on in front of us, but we got some good prices here. Prices are here to move. Um, I'll work with anybody that comes through. And uh, yeah, we're hoping for a good day. It's hot out here, but we're gonna try to stay cool. Instagram, if you follow, uh huh, we'll be announcing the shows. You should definitely do with the stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, you uh, just, you'll, you'll do just I got a YouTube channel. You want to announce the show, what, what the shows are going to be on YouTube? Maybe get some I attention. I don't have the dates yet. So you don't have the dates? I'm, okay, I'm getting the dates set up in, the, in a week or two because we have guests coming, so we're waiting on them to set there. You know, I'll pass the information. We're gonna along. have a zombie con, we're gonna have everything. Okay, I'll run into you soon. See you. How much is a creature? Guys, I would take five bucks a piece on them. Take them all for me too. Oh, yeah. Got the whole thing. That's the creature. Oh, you're gonna take it out. 
Yeah, I've had the Wolfman on my desk for years. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. Can I see the Frank's design too? Yeah. Is that the one with the head rolls in the dark? Is it the one Yeah, the Frank's like rolls in the dark. Yeah, they're really cool. Thank you. No problem. They're really cool. Nine volt dots all over by What do you want for all of them? Really? 15 you said? 15 I take for all of them. Huh? 15 for all of them. Yeah, you know what, I even have the wolf man, but I'm gonna take them. No deal. I mean, we're looking for the same stuff. That's 60, 70 stuff. Oh, That's but you're too young. How old are you? 24. Young for that. I love it, man. It's the best. It's the best stuff. Yeah, I have um, CGL. CGL, that's yes, what I'm sir. saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I recognize the voice once you started talking. I looked up, I was like, I see your videos. Cool. I didn't know you were a vendor too, like at, at the flea markets. No, this is our first time. Oh, is it? First time for the year. I, I come maybe once or twice a year. To vet, to sell? To sell, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know you uh, You definitely walk it all the time, right? Oh, yeah, every weekend. It's a good flea market. I mean, every, every time I come here, I find something. Yeah, you know? yeah. Never disappoints. Yeah, we got a couple more. That's the whole set, yeah, it's got all the parts to it, too. How much for the for the For the hot set, I'm asking 40. If you want to do 45 for both, we could do that. Today, man. I know, man. It's, it is hot. It's 9.30 in the morning. It was already late. Good. Taking it? Yep. Run deal. What did I say? 10 bucks? Yeah. There you go. Have a good one. Yeah, those guys, we got three bucks a piece. Uh, the more you buy, the better deal. Box there, everything's uh, priced on the back, but I'll work with back. you on anything. Yeah. Any questions, feel free to ask. I didn't see that guy in the flea market that you guys saw with that crazy uh, comics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, follow, I watch you guys. That's you fine. follow us on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. No problem. We're filming today. We're going to try to see how it goes. Oh. We'll see. <laughs> Good. Never tried this before. Yeah. That last YouTube, you guys were gonna be here. I was like, Where are you guys? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got here at 6 30, but yeah. we couldn't set up a table till like 8 30, uh, almost 9 o'clock. It was crazy. Well, almost an hour and a half just to check in. Yeah. So we got here late now, and then we got shoved in the back. We got shoved in the back. <laughs> okay, thanks, though. Yep. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> That's we're, awesome. We're trying. We're trying How something much different. Can you get like you have to do it at a lower resolution and then you can stretch it out or yeah, I mean, can you get a day's worth. I, I, I mean, with with the uh, the card in there, it'll probably take a couple hours worth of footage, but 
editing cool. is going to be pretty tough, but we'll, we'll see. This is terrible without tents. What's the process? I think I asked it's you not about. hard. Um, Do I have to bring my homeowner's insurance policy? No, no, no. You call your homeowner. That's great. Things are coming out faster than we are. We're, we're live right now. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Am I going to make the footage? Yeah, what are you? Who are, who are you? Uh, I got a card right here for you. CGL New Jersey Collectibles. Okay, alright. Check it out. Alright, thank you, man. No problem. That's cool. I gotta start doing that. I just, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. You just gotta, I mean, hey, I can't tell you, I can't tell you that I knew anything about doing it. Just hit yeah. record and go. That yeah, was pretty much so, it. Right? I'm gonna hit you with uh, one of your famous quotes. What do you want to pay for? <laughs> <laughs> Thirty? Was that thirty-five? Oh, just take five off. That's not too bad. Thirty. Thank you. Thank you. Half off everything. <laughs> Thank you. Just. Fine, man. Happy to support the cause. Thank you. Yeah, he, you know what it is. Really, I screwed up. All you see, all the stuff I brought on my table. Yeah, but that's what. Oh, I want to get 30. rid of it. But really, I'm taking space away from stuff he could be bringing that's higher value. Yeah, yeah. You so want a bag? If we were to if you got one, yeah. really get a spot, I mean, I was taking the opportunity to hopefully get rid of a couple of boxes of crap. And I got crap from the garage, space with a shed. Sure. Not good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah definitely, whole, like, whole, especially whole, Chris, if you're going to do another I lap, go I'm right up do. there, go to the, the second window, the lady with the. Well, you're not re-upping. You're just telling her, I want, uh, I want to buy the month of July, and my buddy's 1252, 1255. I want the one next. If you want the one, okay, next, you can do yeah. whatever you want. But... That's so, the 1255. Yeah, yeah. Really we're taking 12. Right? So we're going to take yeah. 1250. We're going to ask for 1252. No, I have. You I have, have 1252 and 1255. Okay. If you, I'm 1255. So if you want to go on the other side of me, but okay, my okay, friend okay. Alex is. On the, that'd be totally gotcha. No, I'll, I'll definitely ask because I want to do the month and I want to get I want to get stuff it's, out. It's way better. You want to be next to 1252 or in that month? No, you want to be. It goes like this: 1252, 1255. You want that spot for next month. You know what I'll do is when I walk and see the numbers, I'll text you which number to get. Okay. All right. Perfect. And then, and then uh, we'll be good to go. And then we'll add another another vendor to the line. Yeah, man, it'd be cool. <laughs> Especially like bathroom breaks and stuff. Like absolutely, if you're around, yeah. you gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just nice. It's nice. That's why. Yeah, definitely. All That's right. The next day go by. Yeah. All right, guys. Happy All hunting. Right. Thank yes. you. Good luck. Good luck. Find some stuff. Alright guys, so I'm home. It's the next day after the uh, flea market. Uh, we unloaded the cars with all the stuff that we didn't sell, uh, but I was able to sell a lot of really uh, nice items and um, I got some pretty decent prices for them. But just sharing my thoughts on the whole experience, right off the bat, I have to say I was disappointed uh, with how long it took us to actually set up. So dad and I arrived at the flea market at 6.30 in the morning, a little bit earlier than we usually get there, because usually when we buy, we get there between 7 and 8 o'clock. Uh, so we got there at 6.30 and right away from as soon as we got there, there was a line of, of probably about 50 people already there. And I was just like, wow, like that that's kind of crazy how, because I mean, we've set up in the, in the, at the flea market before it, you never see a line that big that early in the morning. But as we were walking around and talking to different people, we found out that that's apparently become the new norm at the New Jersey Meadowlands flea market, which is a good thing. Um, but for us arriving there on that on that particular day with you know we were only trying to get there for one day uh it was kind of a shocker to realize how long it actually took so 
how long did it actually take? We got there at 6.30, we probably didn't set up our, our table or at least begin setting up our table until about 8.30. So it took, it took like two hours to actually get set up. So that was kind of disappointing because while I did sell a lot of really good stuff and um, like I said, got some good prices for it, um, I definitely, we missed out on some of the higher quality buyers. So I was very surprised with how few people actually looked through the comic books and um, a lot of people were more interested in the toys than they were the comic books, which is kind of interesting, um, especially because I, I, I did bring some good comics and um, there were some guys that went through it. Uh, out of our, out of all the comics that we brought, so dad brought, I think like three or four short boxes of like two, three dollar comics. And I think somebody bought three and that was it. And then I brought a, a better box of um, of like individually priced comics that were priced kind of fair. I mean, some were high, some were, were probably fair priced, but overall just like, you know, pricing them for a little less than what they're going for online. And I think besides Dolph, who fortunately he showed up and bought some books, I think besides him, I don't think anybody else uh, bought a book, but very few people even looked through the box, which I was surprised with. Now, the reason I say that though is because why it was disappointing that we got there, you know, we set up so late, was because a lot of the comic book collectible buyers, like myself, we get there early. So by, you know, by 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, we've already picked through um, the better collectibles in the flea market. And a lot of people, myself included, we're out of there before nine o'clock. So I know some people say like, oh, we get there early at like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. It's like, guys, that's not early. You're there late. If you're there at nine o'clock in the morning, you are late. And I hate showing up late, but sometimes, you know, if I have a, a long Friday night or something like that, uh, getting up early is, isn't um, the easiest thing in the world. But um, yeah, just know that, and this goes for the Meadowlands flea market. I'm sure it goes for other flea markets all across the world is that if you think you're getting there early, believe me, there are people there that are earlier than you um, and they're, they're finding the better stuff. So me as a seller, I want we, we wanted to get there early so that we could set up and have those early morning buyers look through the stuff, especially some of the guys that carry a little bit bigger wallets in their pockets and you know they're ready to put down some cash and they know what they're looking for. They're looking for high quality items. That's what I do, that's what dad does, that's what so many of the other guys do that we bump into every single day that were there. I mean, a lot of the times that we're there and we're digging through people's comics, we see similar faces there all the time. And none of those guys were at my booth because I think because by the time it got set up, it was like the day's already over for those guys. They're already going on to the next thing. So with that being said, we learned that there were people uh, lined up to, to get tables at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, guys. Like, I just can't like I don't I don't think that first of all I don't think that's legal <laughs> I don't I think I feel like the state troopers um, that uh, circle the Meadowlands flea market I feel like they would have told people you know you have to wait a certain time before like, you can't camp out here but some people getting there as early as two o'clock in the morning camping out and waiting for the for the flea market um, uh, officials to open up so they can buy a booth it's like that's crazy and it's like we got there at 6 30 we were late for that i mean i was like that's that's crazy um but that's the way it is so it's unfortunate that that happened um just some other things that i noticed uh let me think let me think let me think um it always surprises me what people are are willing to buy and at the price they're willing to pay for it you know so for me the the first time i ever went to the flea the first time we went to the flea market last year as sellers I bought I brought a lot of my five dollar Star Wars or, or X Men or Marvel figures, like you know, just kind of like cheaper stuff that I I wouldn't typically buy, but it's just kind of like stuff that I've accumulated over the years because you know my my collecting strategies and buying strategies have changed over the years. So just a bunch of stuff that I used to I used to buy when I was a, a little kid um, that I put in like a five dollar bin or something like that. Those always sell surprisingly well to me, and the nicer stuff, the stuff that I would be looking at. Like some of the stuff that I had in the in the uh, in the glass case, people aren't really that interested in it. Like they kind of look at it and just like brush right over it. I may, I'm I'm sure it has to do maybe with the the fact that they're individually priced or that the or that maybe because they're behind the the glass case, people think like you know I don't know it could be intimidating um, looking at some, something like that versus just going through a box that's kind of like on the ground and just 
you know, going through somebody's $5 bin. Um, but for me, it's like when I'm going up to somebody, I'm looking at their, I want to see their best stuff. And I, I want to ask, you know, I want to see if I can wiggle the price down on it so I can try to get a, a great deal on great stuff. But some people, it, I mean, hey, look, I used to do that too. And, and the other thing that I noticed, I guess, is a lot of people, I think, can't speak for everybody, but I think a lot of people that bought stuff from me, um, they weren't really exactly collectors or, or, um, or, or, or dealers or anything like that. Like, you know, they, they don't really do what I do, which is kind of buy to sell or, or buy to collect or, or to put complete runs of stuff together or anything like that. It looked like a lot of the, uh, and I could be totally wrong, but it just looked like a lot of the people that bought from me were people that were just, you know, trying to buy something cool or trying to buy something fun or just trying, or I had two kids come up to me and they were interested in the Star Wars toy that they got. Maybe they just bought it to play with it. So it, it's kind of interesting, but um, definitely uh, different different buying strategies. Always It always amazes me um, what people do. And I, I think it's a great thing, um, especially because, when when you can figure out what it is people like, um, especially what what more people like. So like when I'm selling my price comic books, obviously it takes a very specific buyer to want to spend thirty, forty, fifty dollars on a comic book. Um, but if you were to sell dollar comics, you know it, it, a much wider audience is going to gravitate towards that. So it's interesting always to see what people are willing to buy because it allows you to prepare for the next time that you go. Um, what what to bring? What 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 sold well? What didn't sell well? You know what were people interested in? What were they asking questions about? What did people not give a second glance to? Um, one thing I'm looking at right now is my Space 1999 Eagle, which is a really hot item that two guys were were interested in. It, as in they they said that that's a really nice piece or something like they they said yeah I have I have complete ones and everything like that, but it surprised me that. Um, it didn't surprise me that not a lot of people really knew what that was. It wasn't really a great, it's not really a great flea market item. You know what I mean? I, I had an $80 price sticker on it. That's honestly a pretty good deal for it. But the the whole, it's a big bulky plastic thing. It's really not a great flea market item um, that a lot of people, I guess, would be interested in. Versus um, my little Hot Wheel cars uh, that, that I had. I had like some Corgi Juniors and some Hot Wheel Red Lines that were kind of in rough shape guy bought them he bought the whole lot of them he just he was i said i think i said 20 bucks for all of them which i thought was a good deal it was probably like about three three bucks a piece um you know he, he bought bought all of them so uh my little burger king figures my universal monster figures guy wanted all of them so it was definitely really cool but the bigger bulk i think i think just in general the bigger the item is the harder it is to sell and then when you go to a flea market, the higher the price is, the harder it is to sell. So if you have a bigger item at a high price, I just think it's it's pretty difficult to sell that at a flea market, um, which I was aiming to do because bigger items are harder to ship on eBay. Or when I say harder to ship, I mean more expensive to ship. So it's something like I could sell that Eagle on eBay probably for about $100 or more. But it would probably cost me about thirty dollars or more to ship it. Um, so if I could sell it at the flea market for eighty, seventy, sixty dollars, it's I'm basically getting the same kind of price for it. So, uh, and I guess that was another thing with with some of my price stickers is I priced everything kind of fairly. I think I priced everything a little bit less than what what they were going for on eBay, uh, just in general, and. Um, I didn't want my price stickers. I, I, can't, I always, anytime somebody was looking through stuff, I always said, just ask me, we'll make a deal, we'll do something with it. Because I didn't want my price stickers to intimidate uh, potential buyers, um, which could definitely happen. Um, I know myself included, um, I talked about this on the channel a bunch of times. Sometimes you see a, a high price sticker and you automatically just assume, you know, this person is asking a ridiculous price. They obviously don't want to sell these items. Um, there, you know, there's, it's, it's way too overvalued and, and this, that, and the other thing. Um, but you should always ask. And that, that's something that I've been working on the past year, really ever since I started YouTube, especially cause I have the camera on me. I don't want, I want, I don't want to, uh, uh, look like I'm just intimidated by things. So I, it like kind of pumps me up to try to ask and uh, about bigger items, but always ask if you can, if the, the seller's willing to work with you. And, and if not, like I've had examples on the channel where, 
Um, I thought I threw out some fair numbers to people that just were not going to budge off their prices, and it is what it is. But I've also thrown a lot of offers out to people that had sticker prices on things, and they accepted my offers, which worked a lot better for me. And um, I think that that's uh, pretty important, I think, for everybody. Um, if you see something that you like, you know, you should at least ask about it, and uh, and maybe maybe you'll be able to make a deal. Um, so just to sum that up, the whole day, um, it was overall, it was a, it was a I give it kind of like a, an okay, good experience. You know, it wasn't a great experience. Um, like I said, just, just the fact that we set up late, um, to me took a lot out of it. I wanted to be set up by seven and we almost didn't get complete. We, like I said, we got our spot at around eight 30 and we really didn't get set up until about nine. So about two hours after the initial rush of collectors and investors and, and resell you know, all those guys that came through. Fortunately, um, the funny thing is, is that my two biggest sales of the day came as we set up. It was kind of like the last of the of the the dealers that were, you know, the big spenders that were there. They came, the two guys, uh, the one guy that bought the Star Wars stuff and the other guy that bought a whole uh, conglomerate of stuff. They came as we were setting up. It just leaves me to believe that had we set up sooner, we would have gotten better buying, uh, better buyers uh, who who would have been willing to spend a little bit more. But overall, I cashed on the day um, pretty good. I probably made uh, probably about 350 bucks um, in cash. You know, that's it's non-taxable. I don't have to worry about shipping or anything like that. And when you consider about the, the price for the items that, that um, I paid, I had a lot of stuff that I sold that I paid nothing for. I, I got a lot of that stuff for uh, as kind of like... Um, freebies and, and giveaways and stuff like that. Um, and then some other of the stuff that I sold, I probably ended up either, I'm trying to think of some of the things that I sold. I'm trying to think, it's actually kind of hard to remember what I sold because I'm looking at all this stuff right now that I, that I brought home and I was like, dang, I really didn't sell anything, but I did. I actually sold a lot of stuff, but overall, I, I think especially the Star Wars stuff did pretty good on it, uh, made some nice money there. And for anybody that's interested, the month of July, I went ahead and I paid for a seller spot for the entire month of July. Um, so basically, at the New Jersey Meadowlands Flea Market, it is very expensive to set up a table. It costs us $105 for one day to set up a table. Um, I went ahead and uh, purchased a monthly pass for the month of July. It's going to give us three dates because there's two weekends in July where the flea market is closed. So the second the 10th and the last weekend of July are all dates that I will be setting up there. Uh, it costs $210 for the three days. So obviously a lot better deal than, than just having to spend on one day. It's basically like buy two, get one free. But the cool thing is that um, Dolph, he's going to be setting up. Um, he has a YouTube channel. He was there in the video in case you didn't, in case you didn't see it. Um, he has uh, a really nice collectibles booth where he does trading cards and comics. He's going to be setting up in one spot. Uh, apparently, one of his good friends is going to be setting up in another spot who also does collectibles. And I'm going to be setting up right next to those guys. So it's going to be a line of three vendors. All of us are going to be selling vintage collectibles and um, comic. I mean, obviously, I'm going to probably do a little bit more variety with action figures and uh, bring in a new wave of comic books and all other sorts of stuff. So it's going to be kind of cool that we're going to have like three vendors all kind of doing the same thing. And since I already bought the pass, I can go there as soon as I wake up and pull in the driveway for the, and as soon as I pull into the parking lot for the flea market, I can set up right away. So it's really good that I already got that done and out of the way. I have my pass over here so I can just show the guy at the, at the gate and uh, he'll let me through. So I can get there for six, six thirty, and set up and have everything set up by seven o'clock and get some of those better buyers. So overall, good experience. I'm looking forward to doing this again in the future. I, I don't know how the video is going to turn out. I mean, we'll, we'll see. This is going to be an experiment for all of us. You know, I've never, I haven't watched too many people. I don't know if I've ever watched anybody set up a video as a flea market seller. So I'm not calling myself a pioneer on this. I'm just saying I haven't seen it done before. So I don't know how I should do it exactly. Um, I don't know if the footage is going to look any good. I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, you guys can't see what the camera looks like, but I'm kind of just, it's kind of a makeshift uh, little studio set here. So we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully it comes out good. I hope you guys enjoy it. I had fun making it. Um, 
it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the finished product looks. It might not be as long as some of my other videos. I know this recap is getting pretty lengthy. It'll probably eat up a bulk of the video. But overall, really fun experience. Uh, can't wait to do it again. Um, and I'll be doing it at least the next couple weekends as far as making these uh, flea market seller videos. On top of the fact that I can also walk around the flea market and, uh, and, and pick things up as I go. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, if you found it useful, if you found it entertaining, if you found it exciting, please consider liking it and subscribing and letting me know what your favorite part of the video was. All right, guys. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.